История говорит о литовцах и русинов. У вас уже маетов. Никто ничего не спрашивал. Can't even call us Lithuanians. Мнения дикарей, которые не умели писать, жили в лесу. Can I just end this video now? ВКЛ это буквально литовская Русь, где на западе жили литвины, исторические литовцы, на востоке русины. Все вместе это предки белорусов. So we're half human and half extraterrestrial. We're hybrids. So the other day I was scrolling on TikTok, having a good old time, and out of nowhere I get bombarded by this goofy ass dude making videos about me. And this is not just your average Russian influencer. For some reason he decided to dedicate his entire TikTok account to spreading historical fakes about Lithuania. Один из аккаунтов с названием Лекс Бондер, который распространяет исторические фейки про Великое Князство Литовское. The man comments under all of my videos. Но Павлик, 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 Павлик. The man became obsessed with me. I mean, for real, is he like have a crush or something? He made around four or five responses to my videos. И он публикует вот такие видео. I forgive women for their lesbianism, he said, but I'll never in my lifetime forgive men for being gay. После того, как Павлик вновь показал отрывок из моего ролика абсолютно без какой-либо информации, он обвинил меня в литвинизме. Что такое литвинизм? So in short, Lithuanism is all about Belarusians being the true Lithuanians, and modern Lithuanians are just like Samogitians. And we basically stole their entire name, their entire identity, their history. And it's relatively new phenomena. I mean, they basically didn't care for the last 500 years, and now they just woke. Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President <laughs> And this Russian influencer is not the only one. There's like entire fake history channels. This means that Grand Duchy of Lithuania was not Lithuanian. Дякую чу тому, що вони переняли історію Великого князства Литовського. Вони ж не могли там виступати жемальці. У найновшій історії літвинську спадщину фактично опанували сьогоднішні литовці. Але де ж там? So where does it all coming from? Problem is that the Belarus as a state was created at 19th century and till this day they don't have any basic national identity. That's why they're becoming a second Russia. And to cope with this fact, they need to look back at history for better days. So, I mean, isn't Lithuania just this tiny country filled with Baltic speakers? How can it? It was the biggest country in Europe, my friends. It was the biggest country in Europe. But to be fair, all of the lies has to have some truth in it. As you will see, they do have some reasonable claims based on history of Grand Duchy of Lithuania. From around 16th century, Grand Duchy of Lithuania becomes also a Belarusian state. In the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, power was held by the higher echelons of the aristocracy. On the other hand, according to the Second Lithuanian Statute of 1566, the minor and middle nobility of the principality received new rights, including the ability to send their representatives to local sejmiks. And it was an extremely tolerant empire for the time. It was multicultural, multinational. The groups of Baltic speakers that are called the Lithuanians managed to consolidate a state. Most of the territory of Old Rus comes under the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Faced with pressure from the West, the Lithuanian state in the early 14th century, in the 1300s, was able to move south from its base around Vilnius into what's now Belarus and deep into what's now Ukraine. The statutes are written in all Church Slavonic language. The language, the Chancery Slavonic, the law, all gets absorbed by Lithuania. The Lithuanians take it over. They appropriate it, they make it their own. There is also some archaeological evidence of Slavic cultures in Lithuania proper. They were the last major pagan group in Europe. They were the last ones who were able not to be enslaved more than they enslaved others. They raided Rus for slaves. They raided Poland for slaves. They also raided their Baltic, their, their pagan neighbors for slaves, so long as they had pagan neighbors. They brought in tens of thousands of people to work as slaves um, in, in, in their agriculture. Then the fact that Lithuanians 
were a minority in their own state, but if you ask me, it just shows what's a great empire. The Lithuanian rulers are always ruling over a country which is majority Christian because most of the people who are in Lithuania are in what is now Belarus and then later in what is now Ukraine, i.e. they're Eastern Christians. So the whole time, this is a regime where the rulers are pagans and the ruling families are pagans, but most of the population are actually, are actually, are actually Christians. Then the fact that Ruthenian lands were pretty much left to run on their own? They say to the, to the, to the, to the princes of Rus, you don't have to change anything. We're just gonna marry into your families you're going to regard us as 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 the as the center of the state, and you're going to, and you're going to organize taxes for us, and that's how it works. And they claim that the full name was Grand Duchy of Lithuania, Samogitia, and Rus, which wasn't a thing. The Lithuanian Grand Dukes they not only know all about this, they know about Rus. They know that Rus existed. They know that Rus was a very important state, and so to their own list of titles, they add, "We are the rulers of Rus." So. They, so the Lithuanian Grand Dukes add, we are the rulers of Rus. So it was beautiful. We gave you rights. We treated each other pretty good. Uh, your culture, language, religion flourished. The problem is actually both Belarusians and Lithuanians have a main character syndrome. You got me. And out of four countries that have some claim in GDL history, Three of them have the same version of history. Instead of engaging in discourse and claiming historical events from 16th century, they seem to be engaged into falsification of history. I didn't want to make any comparisons, although I could, but it does seem very similar to The other day I was watching the History Channel after 12 p.m. There are many ancient legends which suggest that some of the monuments were built with the help of acoustic levitation. Wait a minute, that seems very similar to Belarus extremist. <clears throat> this area of the planet and or the people that live here are stupid and brown. Some experts say that there is no way that the primitive people that existed here could have possibly built this big thing thing because it's too big. Might it be possible that ancient extraterrestrials might have visited these savages and taught them literally everything that they know? If you really break down all of those discussions, it all comes down to two statements. The first being the first capital was Navarudak, and the second statement is that the statute were a uh, Ruthenian language. If I get thousand likes on this video, I will make part two where I debunk the Belarusian brain rot. Or just to find out uh, how did they...